Well, I'm a big fan of Steve Sarkeesian, not just as a ball coach. The guy can call a game. He can put defenses in conflict with the mismatches that he can always create. But Texas is always going to have a great football mind as their head coach. It's just whether or not they can have a guy that can also serve at the same time as a political figure within the state. And Steve Sarkeesian has the temperament to be able to handle the expectations of what's asked of the head coach of Texas. Look, I'm from Dallas. Like, I know what that school is about to a certain extent. There's a lot of egos that will need to be massaged. There's a lot of people that are going <laughs> to demand Steve Sarkeesian's time. That's just to be expected. However, he has the temperament, and I think is such a good guy, David, that he'll welcome that challenge. He's such a great people person that he'll welcome those people in while still putting an excellent football product on the field each and every Saturday as well. I feel the same way because when, when you look at um, Sark, he makes it easy on quarterbacks, right? He's, he's going to coach offense great. I felt the same way about Tom Herman when he took the job. Um, there's, there's more to this job than obviously than just meets the eye. It's not – everybody points to it right away and says this is one of the best jobs in all of college football. They've only won a couple championships in 52 years. So this isn't a job that's a perennial power. We feel like it should be, but – there's a lot of things that go on with the dynamics that makes it very hard to succeed, and there hasn't been a lot of success. So I think you have to you have to understand that. You have to look at that. Now, as far as Nick Saban handling this and Alabama handling this, Jim McElwain, Kirby Smart, Lane Kiff, like this is just another day at the office. Alabama's accustomed to dealing with this almost every single year. I know they'll be fine, but Sark dealing with, with this job, just in the, all the other aspects of it, Des, I don't think it's the football. I don't think it's getting the guys. I think it's, like, uh, like Greg said a little bit, is dealing with all the egos and all the people you got to say yes to and you got to, you know, do all kinds of stuff for. Yeah, I tell you what, I mean, to put it in a nutshell, it's dealing with the politics off the field. I think that we all have confidence that Steve Sarkeesian will be able to be an effective head coach. But don't forget, he coached pretty much on the West Coast for the most part, USC, Washington. You know, now he's in Alabama, obviously rehabilitating his whole career. Now he has a head coaching opportunity at, in Austin at the University of Texas. But that's a different culture. That's a different region. I want to see how he deals with the politics of it. Uh, when we when the, announce, when the announcement came out, David, we were on air, I said that, you know, they wouldn't hire a young coach. Not meaning he's younger, but he's a young coach who I think can, um, can relate to to the players a little better than Coach Herman because the news coming out of Austin was it was just his kind of um, my way or the highway attitude that didn't gel well with the players. And I think Steve Sarkeesian will be a little softer. Um, I think he'll be a little bit more effective. But dealing with the politics off the field, and Greg said it best, he's from Texas. He understands that's the part that I want to see if, Sark if Sarkeesian is able to handle. So, McElroy, let me push back a little bit, though, because realistically, this announcement was made hours after the firing of Tom Herman. And this isn't Urban Meyer. I mean, is there any surprise that this is the guy that they immediately went into without some sort of a massive search? <laughs> I'm not shocked because the team that they're striving to be. Now, whether Texas wants to admit this or not, and it might really upset Longhorn Faithful to listen to this, so cover your ears and pretend not to hear. The guy you're trying to chase is Lincoln Riley. Well, this is 2020's version of Lincoln Riley. Because we saw Lincoln Riley at East Carolina get hired by Bob Stoops in 2015 and resurrect this Oklahoma program now to the point in which they've won six straight Big 12 championships. Well, who's the best offensive mind right now in college football? The winner of the Broyles Award? It's Steve Sarkeesian. So let's bring him to Austin and let's allow him to now build a program that's going to not just be comparable to Lincoln Riley, but hopefully for Texas, a team that can not just beat them on a regular basis, David, but a team that beats them more often than not. And that's something that hasn't happened in a really, really long time. And in order to have success, the coaches you hire make you successful, okay? It's not just... It's not just Steve Sarkeesian. And what I know about Sark and what y'all know about Sark, Sark is cool. He's very chill. He's very California. You better get a rough rider on defense. <laughs> your D.C. better be somebody. You know this. Your D.C. better be somebody that riles some feathers, that, that can be also be the bad guy and bring that kind of yin and yang. Players relate to both types. Players, 
Some play players relate really well to, you know, in your face. A lot of them don't, but some of them need to be stroked and patted and loved. So I think you need all types on this staff. So I think I'd be interested to find – Find out who his defensive coordinator is, and um, I think a, a, good, a strong personality, an intense personality, would be very successful. So what David is saying is he needs a heavy. He needs a heavy in there to deal with the knuckleheads <laughs> that he's not going to want to deal with. But Jason, you brought up a good point. I wanted to make sure that I, um, that you understood that just because Sarkeesian was hired. Hours after they made the announcement that Herman was fired does not mean that Sarkeesian was their first choice. He could have been their second or third choice. What this means is, behind closed doors, they knew they wanted to fire Herman, but they wasn't going to pull the trigger until either they got their first, second, or third choice to say, okay, I'll come. Then they say, okay, Break the news, we're going to fire Herman, and this is going to be the guy I hired. So don't assume that Sarkeesian was the first choice, because I've heard from some reliable sources that he wasn't. Uh, just a couple recommendations on the defensive coordinator to put a bow on David's thought process. Is Will Muschamp intense enough? Because if he becomes the D.C. and he's familiar with Austin, I think that might be a pretty interesting yeah. mix. Just saying. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.